You are now entering the Simnotics. I am Alex, and we have a Polestar 2 video. This video was actually pre-recorded back in December when we had the update. Didn't have time uh, with the holidays and stuff like that to upload it, so I'm putting this together right now. But when we got the Polestar 2, a lot of people kept asking, like, how does Polestar and, I guess, Volvo take care of software updates? You know, not a lot of car companies even have all over-the-air software updates like Tesla does, and we all know how Tesla does it. It's it's a it's a really uh, seamless, easy thing to do. So, how does Polestar Two handle this? We're going to take a look at it right now. So, we'll jump to me in the car back in December, and then I'll talk about this after. All right, here is how you update your software on the Polestar Two. As you can see, like on your Android phone, if you swipe down, there's your notifications here. So as you can see on this icon, we do have this cloud icon, kind of like a cloud storage. Uh, interesting that they have it like this with an exclamation mark in a cloud, but that is actually for your software. So if you swipe down, it says software update ready. So just like on Android, let's click on that, install now. It'll take you to another page. Please confirm the start of the installation, then leave and lock the door. It's gonna take about an hour 30 for this particular one. So that's a pretty long one. Let's connect it. We are also, as you can see here, on Wi-Fi. So uh, leave and lock the vehicle now. So we'll check in later for uh, when it's done. So the next morning after I got into the car, and there's a menu, there's a screen that says the uh, update finished and you just exit out of it. Unfortunately, there was no log on that screen. So I do, that's one complaint I do have. I, I do want Polestar to improve on that. I want them to put a log in there. You can actually check the log when you go inside the menu. But after the update's complete, I want to see the log automatically um, uh, filtered onto your display. Uh, like Tesla. Tesla does that. After an update, you get into the car and they have a beautiful log there. And I think any piece of tech, any piece of electronic that has update capabilities, OTA capabilities, that's what it happens. Like on your smartphone, you know, Android phone, um, iPhone, that's usually what happens after an update. Same thing with Windows and Chrome OS and everything else now. So I would like to see that happen. Uh, the next thing I would also like to see them improve on is with the app, right? So I'm spoiled because I, I'm a Tesla owner as well. And Tesla OTA updates, you get notified on that on your phone. There's a um, notification that pops up. All you need to do is you can schedule or start it immediately on your phone. You just simply tap and it, 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 that's it. That's done and it takes care of it for you in the it, you know without you needing to be in the car. However, Polestar 2, you actually need to be in the car. As far as I know, as far as this one experience, one update we've had so far, that seems to be the case. You have to be in the car to start this update. And although the update did take a little bit of time, they still are in second place right now. There's no other car manufacturer that comes even close to what Tesla's doing. But Polestar is... In second place, they actually had a seamless OTA experience. I've heard horror stories from other manufacturers, uh, other cars that need like some really nice EVs that dealerships are like, you got to take your car into our dealership to get an OTA, even though that shouldn't be true. Like I read that in the ID4 uh, forums when we were considering getting that car, people are saying like dealerships are saying you can't update the car unless you take it into our, our uh, dealership to do it for you. And it's like, people are like, what, wh why? And I think they can learn a lot from Tesla. They don't need to copy Tesla uh, or like copy their interface and how they handle things exactly the same. However, there are certain benefits to what Tesla is doing, this whole mobile experience, seamless, easy transition. Um, and I do want to see more of that on the Polestar 2. I I do think we're going to see more improvements. Just seeing the tease of the Polestar 3 and the new Android Automotive like redesign, I kind of hope that we do get an update like that, kind of like how we do on Android with the new version of Android. I want to see the new version of Android Automotive on the Polestar 2. And if that's the case, stuff like this that I'm talking about will happen because that's what happened on Tesla. When we got the Model 3, it was nothing like what it is now. All these new improvements you know, like uh, Sentry Mode, all that. When we had the Model 3 at first, we, none of that existed. It was through software updates that we got these things. It proved to become such a great experience that we have now on, on the Model 3. I can see the same for the Polestar 2. It just takes time. It takes time. So this is what it's like right now to update the Polestar 2. So there's a lot of things that they can improve, but it's already miles ahead of everybody else except 
Tesla. So I'm I'm happy to see that. Once again, I'm Alex from The Subnautics. This was just a quick video talking about the Polestar 2 and how we do updates right now. If you want to see more videos about the Polestar 2, hit that like button. Leave a comment what you would like to see. We're going to have to review in a couple more months. You know, we really want to make sure we're like doing the true ownership experience instead of just the whole couple weeks in it. So we're liking the car so far, but we'll have a lot more content soon about the Polestar 2. And we'll see you guys very soon. So the other day I was on a Zoom call at work and I just dropped everything I was saying and I told them, subscribe.